Great, we're going to move on now to talk a little bit about the uh, learning path for people that are interested to uh, learn how to become a blockchain engineer. So the first question I have for all of you is, what kind of people do you think are suited for a career in, in blockchain? What kind of skill sets or interests do you think uh, lend themselves well? Well, I think blockchain companies need a variety of, of skills. Yeah. Uh, you, know, when, you know, for us, when we started about a year ago, uh, none of us had done any blockchain engineering in the past. Uh, we were all fairly technical, so we learned Solidity, uh, and now we're writing smart contracts. But even if you don't know Solidity, um, if you look at a full stack blockchain company, uh, you need people who are designing uh, UI UX to make a great experience for users. Uh, you need people who are um, doing DevOps and, and, and backend engineering to make sure that the system um, stays alive. Uh, so for instance, we maintain our own Ethereum uh, clusters, um, you know, and so that uses um, Kubernetes and Docker. And so, um, you know, we the the people who are managing that don't necessarily need to know, need to know anything really about um, you know Ethereum or blockchain or token economics. They just need to know how to um, you know maintain a good distributed system, which right. is a it's skill set a lot of people software, have. Software engineering, right, disciplines. right. But in, even if you're not technical, um, a really big part of blockchain is marketing and forming a community. And that's a skill set um, which is very important for a lot of the key blockchain projects because at the end of the day, blockchain is about creating a distributed community. So um, even if you don't have any technical skills, but um, you're good at uh, you know, PR, communication, social media, and marketing, uh, blockchain is a great place to be. Yeah, I'll add something to what Michael said. I think in, we're, we're sort of in the early days of blockchain, so I think a lot of the, the knowledge are transferable from your pre prior education or previous, previous project you've worked on. Uh, and I think another way to think about it is basically, it's still in the early days, so a lot of time you have to be a generalist as opposed to be a specialist, mm -hmm. right? So um, case in point, some of my co-founders, they, they come from that um, system engineering background, so they understand the backend uh, infrastructure. Right, and another co-founder comes from a more of a kind of a risk management, right, and also financial industry. So I think there is a whole collection of uh, expertise you can build, right, to basically be the pioneer of this kind of a, a new f technology, right, which is known as blockchain, right. Uh, yeah, I, I want to add that um, in com compared to like other verticals like AI or. Um, Know, traditional software company, uh, the success of the company really uh, depends on the white paper, the quality of that, and the quality of research. Mm. Uh, so that means any uh, research type of skill, uh, say you used to be a researcher in AI or distributed systems, uh, or other fields, even in HCI, mm. uh, they are all directly translatable to uh, this industry. Uh, because really important to explain what you do, uh, the, the deep technical stuff in a way that people can understand. And most people don't want to read your full paper. Got to get them interested by reading the abstract or the first, per first page. How do you do that? Um, uh, it, it's it's very challenging. That's basically what the, all, all, the, all these PhDs do. Uh, uh, like they spend six years uh, honing that skill. Mm. Uh, that's one thing, and the other is like blockchain used to be like a uh, priority club for a bunch of like uh, hardcore, uh, low-level programming engineers. No longer the case. Um, um, these days, uh, like even for for, for the low-level stuff, if you know C or C plus uh, plus, even Go, uh, you you can basically work on any blockchain projects. So, uh, but uh, since uh, Ethereum. Uh, came out and a bunch of like smart contract protocols um, came out. We uh, now we have the, all these uh, platforms that you, uh, people can build general uh, people can build application based on general purpose uh, programming tools like Solidity and others. Uh, and they are more like JavaScript. They are very easy to learn. Um, and so. Even like for someone who hasn't learned programming before, it, it's uh, it's very easy to get started. Mm -hmm. Cool. And and the next one, just because I think we almost answered it in this question, I know uh, the next question was what languages should I learn. But since we've 
we've kind of covered that almost all engineering disciplines can be involved in some way. Uh, I did know earlier you had showed me you had some statistics, though, from right. GitHub. Could you just tell us what those were for the actual um, blockchain repositories, if you really right. did want to get involved at the at the protocol level? Right. So I think uh, so. This is actually a study that was done by Deloitte. Uh, it was a consulting firm based in uh, as a global consulting firm. In 2007, they look at kind of host holistically across the entire uh, Git GitHub, uh, and they just break down by number of repo uh, submitted on GitHub, uh, and then the breakdown largely basically. 40% of the actual contributions are related to JavaScript or Solidity, right? So a lot of uh, kind of a scripting languages, mm. right? And I think that's kind of understandable because Solidity is the native programming language for Ethereum, right? Okay. And it's also one of the easier language to learn, so 40%. Mm. And then because we're still in the early days of blockchain technology development, so a lot of people are writing high performance protocols. Mm. So a lot of these are based on, you know, kind of lower level programming languages. So those are like C++, uh, Go, which is a, mm highly paralyzed, uh, parallelable, uh, paralyzable um, programming language from Google, right? And then uh, then there's like Rust. So these are like kind of a lower level programming languages and that accounts for about 30%, right? So, and then the rest of it just kind of really variations like Java or, you know, even like people are adopting using C Sharp, right? So I think as depending where you are and what type of projects you're tackling, right? If you're focusing on, uh, let's say, DAP development, Solidity is the way to go. If you're focusing on, hey, I'm going to develop the next generation of high performance protocol, then maybe Go or Rust, right? So I think that's kind of the general market breakdown right now as it stands. That makes sense, yeah. Um, and of course, because these are protocols, technically they can be implemented in any language you choose. So mm -hmm. I think a good project, if you really want to get involved in the protocol level, is uh, you know, re implement Bitcoin in the language of your choice, and you'll, you'll learn mm -hmm. everything. Uh, okay, so the next one, this one's for, for everyone. Uh, we wanted to get some recommended books uh, for people that are looking to get started in this topic. Right. Yeah. Do you um, want to start again? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of really great books out there, so that's one of the benefit of being like kind of this, um, it's kind of the readest, it's kind of the, the trend, the overall trend right now. Uh, so the three books I really recommend, uh, are the kind of a, just from easy to kind of a little bit more technical. Uh, the first one is actually, um, uh, I think it's on the, the practical uh, application of blockchain. And I think in the video, we'll probably add the link to the, to the comment section. Uh, the practical business of uh, blockchain, I think that's a really good introduction course. Um, the the Truth Machine, I think that's another really great book that talks about uh, cryptocurrency and then also how some of the distributed ledger actually works. Uh, and then um, I think the, the, the third one I'm still reading right now is basically, uh, I can't remember the title, but it's the kind of the course book for um, Princeton. So Princeton actually has an open online course to teach about, you know, kind of the fundamental computer science approach of blockchain. And that was a really good book as well. So we'll add the, the title directly to the comment mm -hmm. section. Yeah. Uh, so I, I actually want to mention the, um, the Bitcoin and the Ethereum white papers. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Bitcoin white paper uh, is actually very easy to read, even for a non-technologist. And it kind of shows, um, you know, even back 10 years ago, uh, what the vision and the um, you know the inner workings of the blockchain are. Um, I also, I, I really like the Ethereum white paper because it essentially extends the Bitcoin white paper and shows how smart contracts uh, can be used to you know embed all types of logical structures onto a distributed ledger and what those applications might be out there. Um, and uh, in addition, it kind of goes into um, you know, how Ethereum might evolve from a proof of work mechanism into a proof of stake mechanism. Mm -hmm. So um, they're both pretty long, so they're almost book worthy yeah. uh, in terms of time spent. But I think um, reading those two will give the, the average person a really good understanding of, of the base layer technologies um, in the ecosystem. It's funny too, like in addition to Bitcoin starting the blockchain movement, the white papers started their own white paper <laughs> movement, really brought white yeah. papers back into the mainstream of tech, right. which is uh, kind of another cool side effect of everything that's happened with blockchain. Do you have any other books to add? Uh, I would also recommend uh, white paper uh, as a starting point because yeah. uh, the whole space is so new and serious. Uh, like, you know, a good book takes a couple of years to actually write, and uh, the, the whole history of this space is no more than a couple of years. Right. Uh, white papers, Ether, usually uh, people, when people ask me, I recommend Ethereum and uh, Ethereum first, then Bitcoin. Uh, and, and the uh, interesting thing is like, this white papers actually cite each other. Uh, mm. So if, uh, for someone who really want to 
uh, dig into it. Uh, one thing that you can do, like is something that I do as well, is go to Google Scholar and uh, look mm. for uh, uh, articles that actually uh, cite these papers. And uh, when you look at these articles, you, you, you can, like, Google Scholar shows you, like, how many citations he got. Mm. And you can only look at those that are widely cited. For example, Bitcoin white paper was uh, cited for uh, over 3,000 times, and Ethereum two papers added up together over 600 times. So that's when you know uh, it's, a, it's a good paper because people actually read it and, and, and incorporate their work in their own uh, work. Cool. Right. Yeah. The next one we've got is centering around, and this is for everybody as well. Or actually, sorry, no. This one's just for Aaron. Is uh, how much cryptography do you think is necessary to learn if you want to work on the blockchain? Uh, I think it's safe to start with zero cryptography, and I, I believe many people like uh, who, who really work on uh, the core uh, systems in this space, even some of the hardcore engineers in blockchain, they don't know any uh, cryptography. Uh, and um, the the uh, b because like to build applications like uh, you you don't really need to deal with in, in the underlying uh, cryptography stuff to make things work, um, and uh, as long as as long as I understand the, it's the underlying mechanism and uh, the design so the principles of that, uh, but if you really want to build some uh, uh, new protocols that people haven't built it before, uh, you you need to show that you're protocol is, re uh, is resistant to uh, any kind of attacks. That's when cryptography uh, becomes useful. Mm -hmm. And actually, to write a good white paper, you, you've got to have that some, of those, some of those components uh, baked in. Otherwise, it's not, not, yeah. not that credible. Yeah. The, the one thing I'd just add on that, I would say, um, if you're, if you're going to buy cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. uh, it helps to have a very basic understanding yeah. of uh, you know, like public-private key pairs, uh, you know, why you can give someone a public key you know, you don't want to give someone your private key, uh, and 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 how that gives you security. Uh, I think that it's um, it's actually a very simple concept. I think um, you know, even like a you know an intro to cryptography half hour session. Uh, I don't know if you guys have had a video or not, but uh, that would basically give that concept um, yeah. so, away. Yeah. It's funny, I actually filmed that very video as an internal presentation for BitTiger employees like two years ago. We should probably put it up on our YouTube channel. Um, that, that book, uh, Mastering Bitcoin, also goes through that in like mm. detail. You know, both that, that part and every single part of the Bitcoin blockchain might be a good read after the original white paper. Right, and just add something to yeah. that. Uh, yeah. I think there is a, if you just search for MIT blockchain demo, they actually have a really oh, good, yes. Uh, interactive demo on the web that shows you how the hashing function works, how the private key and public key pair works, and how to uh, how these actually can be formulated into a block, and how these blocks can be connected together into a chain, right? Mm. And it's a very simple demo. Uh, it takes less than 20 minutes to go through it from top to bottom, right. and it's highly interactive, right? right? So I recommend everyone to go check it out. Yeah, do not be the person that learns about public-private key cryptography by keeping your private keys on a Windows laptop. <laughs> that is the worst way to learn. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of good demos out there now where you can get the basics fairly quickly. Um, okay, so this is another one. Uh, people are always asking us for uh, what kind of projects are good ones to get started, um, blockchain-oriented projects. So uh, this is really for everybody if you have any, any ideas. Um, I think for us, like, you know, um, some of the internal discussion we had um, within our team is basically how do you de de develop a DAP, right? I think mm -hmm. to us, it's like that's kind of a good way to kind of get your hands dirty, right? Because that requires understanding how to decentralize certain part of the stack and also how to write smart contracts, right? And to us, it's like, and it's also a good way to interface with the, your potential year in users, right? Um, and then from that, you can expand on, like, what, what are some of the other values, what are some of the Capability you can build into the DAP, right? So that's mm. the way we're approaching this. Yeah. yeah. So any, any DAP that piques your interest, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the simplest way to start it is um, to download a browser extension called MetaMask, uh, which is basically a uh, Ethereum wallet in your browser, um, and then you can start interacting with all the DAPs out there. Mm. Uh, there's a website called DAP Radar, uh, which has a list of them, um, and the the reality is you don't even need any Ether to do it because most DAPs. Uh, run on a test version of Ethereum, 
and therefore you can just get some test ether and start interacting with it and understanding under the hood, um, you know, how they work and um, and why they may or may not be useful to you. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, um, if someone asked me like three years ago, I would say uh, go to Bitcoin repository and check out their GitHub and read the code. Like, uh, thanks to DAP and the Ethereum, you don't you don't need to do that anymore. Might be an easier way to start just by um, uh, checking out some uh, examples. There are, are courses too. Like these days, uh, Berkeley has an online course about like how how you can build all kinds of dApps. Mm -hmm. Stanford recently, uh, last semester, they had a course that students build all kinds of projects. Some of them are really um, interesting. Uh, and a uh, good thing is it, uh, their Slack and uh, their, their website and all the projects that they build and who, 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 who built it, they're all public information that you can just sign up, log in, and uh, uh, learn from them. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just going to get easier and easier as time goes on, now that more people are into the space. Um, okay, so yeah, another I interest for our students, you know, everybody wants to know what's the most efficient, fastest way to get the most amount of skills in the least time. Mm. Uh, so do you have any recommendations for kind of an accelerated learning path? Of course, other than our course, you know, which is coming later. But <laughs> You know, right now, if you were going to start and you had 10 days to learn all the key concepts, what, what kind of path would you take? Um, I, I'll, I think, we, I think, I think the, the, the key concept behind learning is that everyone has different ways of learning. So for me, uh, I think I kind of broke it down into like four different buckets, right? There's like just regular website reading. There's a lot of like checking out GitHub, looking at Medium posts, uh, other people's blog posts. And then I also have a separate track which is like more kind of a long format, like books, because that's more structured, right? Uh, and then what I do in the past uh, year and a half is basically also kind of do a learning hack where I have uh, audio books or podcasts that are at 2x speed. Mm -hmm. So that way I can learn a lot of concept faster, right? Or even to some extent, you can go 3x speed, right? Mm -hmm. And then what I realized also, sometimes the best learning mechanism is basically have some kind of visual interaction. So YouTube videos become a really good concept where I can also even speed up the YouTube videos, right? So I think the, the short answer, I think, is basically do whatever uh, works for you, right? And then they depend on context, right? If I'm driving, it's better to just listen to an audiobook. If I'm sitting at home, it's probably better to read a book. If I'm actually in between public transit, then right. probably a you know short format you know um, website. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, the Zimmer resources now where people you can get you know up to speed and write your own smart contract or develop your own DAP. Um, in a matter of hours. Yeah. Uh, so some of them include um, the site called Zastrin, uh, Z-A-S-T-R-I-N. Um, there's a site called Crypto Zombies where you can build your own Crypto Zombies app. Chin Yuan actually uh, did a video on that a while oh, cool. ago. That's cool. a, yeah, I think oh. that's a good one. Yeah, Very interactive too. Yeah, and, and uh, I think um, the, the folks at Dharma.io um, just created a little dApp where you can build your own loan contract, which is more of a financial use case, yeah. uh, but also something that's very decentralized and uses the native um, blockchain technology. So there's no excuse. You can start. You can make your first DAP today. Yeah. Well, different people have different uh, learning styles. Some people just spend all the time reading. Some people maybe they want to know uh, how to trade all these coins and make some money. Some people want to build some useful applications and get their hands dirty. Uh, well, uh, for the for, for, for the first type of people, like maybe you know, just reading white papers, reading as many as possible. <laughs> uh, but um, really uh, engage with uh, some community and uh, figure out uh, well, what are the latest um, um, white papers and useful white papers uh, that are. Um, interesting to read about. Um, yeah, if you want to like just build uh, applications, um, I think Mike and Z already covered that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think that wraps up uh, what we have for learning path. And next, we're going to move on to the job market and community for blockchain right now.